my name is Carla and welcome to my reflective video. Hello and welcome to week one. We're going to start with acknowledgement. We must think about our ancestors and be grateful for everything they did in the past so that we could have the life we're having today. Secondly, we have the power of purpose and I believe each and every one of us must have a life purpose. And in my point of view, it must motivate us and encourage us to grow. Right now, we have meta learning, which is how we reflect and how do we adapt to different circumstances. And it also includes our skills, how, how do we use them, our knowledge, uh, what we know and what we understand, our character, and that is how we behave and how we engage in the world that we are living in, that we know that is in constant change. Finally, we have manager versus leader, where we can see the difference between them and how managers usually hold all these authority while leaders are more motivational for others. Week two, leadership in the global environment. It is about how we influence others and the importance of understanding the difference between people that affect the success. Then we have globalization of business. Uh, it is about how it increases global competition, which drives prices down and creates larger variety of choices for consumers. Then we, we have a, a question that is, how does international business work? And I'll say they are multinationals, they are emerging, and they are full of tons of opportunities for everyone. Uh, it is important to mention that even from aspects of business that people turn into negatives, we can choose them, sorry, we can choose to turn things into positive globalization in the last decade has helped less adventurous countries to have access to new opportunities and levels of growth that they could have not uh, reached before. We also learn about multicultural environments and cross-cultural environments, which is really cool and the role of leaders and managers in global environments where leaders pull employers to achieve goals while managers push them to achieve them. So there's a huge difference between them. Third week, history and evolution of leadership. Why study, analyze, and learn from leaders in history? Well, as we saw in class, and as the teacher mentioned, recognizing our history and where we came from will help us learn and move forward, which is really, really important. And we also learn about historical leaders in different categories, such as uh, political, military, religious, and yeah, but we also saw about leaders during different eras uh, like the Enlightenment, 19th century, 20th century, and and the modern lead, modern sorry leaders. We learn about the great man leadership theory. It it's from the 19th century, and it is about how history can be largely explained by the by the impact of the great men or heroes like alexander the great and he was a conqueror and abraham lincoln who freed the slaves it's just some examples and the theory says that leaders are born not made they believe that people were born with these traits and only the great people possess them, which is really, uh, I don't know, I don't believe in that, but yeah. And of course, 
it has uh, some downs like this theory lacks of scientific validity and only considers men in power which is uh, which is like really old thinking you know week for evolution of leadership theory why do we study theory well it's a way to explain a set of facts and it allow us allows us to identify a problem or a concept uh, what the, what are traits there are a 19th century research on leadership about the innate characteristic of a leader and identifying the personality traits let's go to trait theories they are an overall assumption about the personality factors and qualities that make a person a good leader Trait theories argue that leaders can be born or made. Traits of successful leaders can be either inherited or acquired through training and practice. Now let's go to four trait theories of personality. Number one, the five factor of personality that are the five, the big five. Gordon Allport's trait theory Hans Essenk's three dimensions of personality and Ryman Cattell's 16 factor model trait theory of leadership. Week five, evolution of leadership theory. Why do followers follow? People want what they are doing and people want what they have. They want to mimic their behavior. Their act, they actually want to be them. Then we have behavioral era, behavioral theory from the 40s to 50s. They have said that leaders are largely made rather than born and that particular behaviors can be learned. There are four behavioral leadership theories, Kurt Levin leadership styles, the Ohio State leadership studies, the Michigan leadership studies, and the Blake and Mons managerial grid. We have the contingent and situational theory of leadership and this theory focuses on the importance of context in the effective leadership. Effectiveness as a leader is determined by, by how well their leadership styles matches a particular context. There, there are different models from Fielder contingency model and her save Blanchard situational. Uh, then we have the leader environment follower interaction theory of leadership from 1970s. It analyzes the deficiencies in the followers' ability, motivation, role perception, and work environment. Leaders create environments where followers innovations and creative, contrib creative contrib contributions are welcome. Thank you.